time for your weekly dose of pop culture with Kathy and Kenny. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday night. We are live. I am Kathy along with... I'm Kenny. It's a cue. Come on now. We don't have that much latency. You I, know. Get the I said, I said, I, what? I said, I said, I'm Kenny. I was pretty much on cue with that. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Cousin Lisa out in the house, our number one pop culture kid. Welcome to the Saturday Night Show. It is Kathy and Kenny Explain Pop Culture. Uh, and we are coming to you live from various places in New Jersey and North Carolina, North and South. South Jersey yep, and North, and North South. Carolina. South Jersey and North Carolina. I'm from North the South. The south. south Jersey. But up, bump. And speaking of which, and I, I'm, I'm all out of, uh, I, I don't have my sound effects because uh, obviously, um, for those of you who do watch us every week, you can see I am not in my normal habitat. I am um, uh, kind of on the road. I had a training all day today and I was uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina, so which is a little over two hours from home. <laughs> And by the time the training ended, I was worried I would not be home in time for the pop culture kids. So again, my sacrifice, I just stayed an extra night are. so we could be here to hang. Here you are. Sweet. Um, this is, this <laughs> Who's is, hanging this is, with us tonight? Who's that? Well, Lisa's hanging with us tonight. Lisa is hanging with us tonight. So thank you so much. And so thank you. If you're, if, if you're hanging with us, if you're on my page and you're hanging with us and you're watching through my page, um, go to <laughs> Kathy and Kenny Explain Pop Culture if you want to leave a comment because um, you won't see the comment. I will see the comments, but Kathy won't see the comments and everybody else won't see the comments. So, you know, if you want to put them on the Kathy and Kenny yeah. Explain, if you want to go to that, you can. Yeah. And if but in the meantime, the stick, stick, yeah, stick around. <laughs> Stick around, hang out. If you are new to the show, if you're new here, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Every week we pick up a different topic <coughs> and just ramble on about uh, pop culture. Actually, this show kind of started as a product of the pandemic uh, because for the longest time we were not able to see each other in person. So we just, um, you know, just started hanging on Saturday night and... You know, I was rambling on on Facebook about my favorite '80s mo movie music and music in general, and then Kenny chimed in, and next thing you know, we got a show. We got a show, got a show here. It's like it's, we we're got like, a show. Hey. We're like the little rascal. Yeah, yeah. You know I was gonna that? say we're like the little rascal. Let's do a show. <laughs> got a problem? Show. Let's do a show. <laughs> Let's solve the problem with a show. Oh, but the best part about the show is that I control all the levers. Ah! Okay, I'm sorry. No, that's wrong. Well, that's just <laughs> that's that's just so I don't know. That's just so wrong. I know that is so narcissistic. Look, look, look at what 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 we're we looking at. So tonight we're going to be talking about the world's greatest comedians. I don't know whether we have all the world's greatest comedians because I work with a no. lot of people who are really great and they didn't make your list. Uh, and it's really weird, too, because some of them are now like either podcasters or even news commentators. Like I see people like Dean Obidala all the time on the news. And I remember seeing him in like open mics and stuff. And now he's this like commentator on MSNBC all the time. And also like John Fugelsank, who... You know, again, maybe not a household name, but I can tell you from um, a, a good eight years in that whole comedy circuit that um, not everybody was like nice. I mean, some people were really nice and really cool people, but some people were. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> see. I need my sound effects now so I can, you know, bleep it to bleep. But I re always remember John Fugel saying as one of those guys who was just just a good person and just really nice and that was well this cool. this well this is also a topic that's kind of close to closer to your heart because you used to be a stand up comedian you used to be a stand up comedian that was and one you of, still uh, and in some effect every saturday night you still are 
<laughs> to varying degrees to scary. Now I words. tried I tried comedy when you tried comedy and I wasn't good at it because I didn't realize how fast it could flash that little light to tell you to get off stage. <laughs> you know what? You have not done comedy until you have been um, in, at a place called Terminal D. Now, Terminal D was this bar that was outside of the airport in Newark, New Jersey, that was frequented by a lot of like state troopers. But I guess the nights they didn't do comedy, they had dancers. Um, so basically, you're on a stage, and all around the stage is a well, a, almost like a moat, because that's where the bartenders are serving drinks, because the bar is kind of around the stage. And in the back is one of those big old cowbell kind of things. It's kind of like the hook from the Uptown Comedy Club. And that was that was a trial by fireplace. That was one of those... Um, uh, what they call the chitlin circuit. Which <laughs> it was like the gong show. It was like the gong show. They had a big. Oh, even. Oh, it was worse. I mean, you know, you bombed on that stage and, you know, you, you, you talk about being in a depression. Um, yeah, you, you were just picking your pride I mean, up all off the floor. <laughs> I, I, I remember one night when I did try comedy, my friends went with me and I wasn't funny at all. Not even a little bit. And me and my two buddies, Mark and Preston, are walking out to the car. And we're walking out to the car, and they're all I bombed. So they're dead silent as we're walking out to the car. They're, like, dead silent. They don't want to say anything. They don't want to say the wrong thing. Preston was always the one who did say the wrong thing. And as we're walking, Preston goes, so let me ask you. Do you get up there? Do you have something planned? Or you just say whatever's on your mind? Because it ain't working. <laughs> and Mark's like, Preston, man, dang, come on. And then we walk over to my car to find out my car had been broken into that night. Oh, and, my goodness. And, and they, took, they took all my cassette tapes except for my Prince cassette tapes, which is good. There is nothing disheartening as uh, I, I tell you what performance and then, you know. Yeah, and they have your car, car. broken too. But I tell you what, who my best com com um, stand-up comedian that is not on this list is my own sister, Kathy Walker. Because she was really, really funny. My sister was hilarious when she did comedy. And um, I, it's so many instances. But one of the reasons, I, I, uh, you know, as a comic, I wanted her to be successful because I was 50% of her act. <laughs> Back there was a time when, yeah, you were, it, I wouldn't say 50%, but you, you, uh, you did make a guest appearance or two. I, 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 you know, you had this one joke that totally destroyed me. Um, okay. we, 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 we were at, we were, it's, it's a clean one. It's, a, it's, it, we were at, a, we were at a function. It's so funny because I know before you get to the joke part, uh, it, it's so funny because I know people in my life as an educator want, oh, you know, they want to see, you know, the proof or, or, and I'm like, oh, thank goodness I did comedy in the eighties. <laughs> you went with no the video. Internet. There, there's no right. internet. Before there's no so video. So, yeah. It's like. Yeah, there yeah. You go. And yeah there's any no proof. The performances that I have that are still left on VHS tape, if we can find them, I don't even know half those tapes probably got washed out in the last flood. But um, um, yeah, but but you know, um, anyway, you, we we um, mom and dad um, worked for blacks and they they were part of blacks in government. Oh, and they were having the black in government function that we were a part of, and you had brought some comics down from New York with you to perform. And me and Junior were sitting there, because Junior's dad worked for the government too, and we're sitting there, and these these beautiful women all over the place. And me and Junior were both single, and we're like, yeah, we're going to kick game, we're going to kick game, we're going to kick game. And a room full of beautiful black women, and me and Junior are ready to kick game, and you get up, you perform, you go, yeah, I bought my brother the perfect gift for Christmas, white sneakers to go with his white girlfriend. My game was shot from that day. I was done. Julia's cracking up. He's like, I'm gonna sweep up here now because <laughs> you're done. <laughs> I could I couldn't do nothing but get our married drinks. That's all I could do. <laughs> I had I I left early, I think. <laughs> I don't think I was that brutal, but oh man, that was brutal. 
Maybe. Block me, block me for the whole night. Um, sorry. That's okay. That's all right. So, and our list of comedians. But you know what? You mentioned that show, and I can't. Uh, I would be remiss, um, um, to not pay homage to uh, a comedian that I loved, that I learned from, that was my. Um, I. I called her my Virgo sister because we were both from Philly. Uh, we were both born on September 15th, uh, different years, but uh, she was my Virgo sister. She was on that particular show and a comedian that I had the pleasure of working with. And I tell you, I was just heart sore um, to find out about her passing. Oh. And that was my good friend, Malik. Melita Apago, who mm. not only was hysterical, um, yeah, I'm in shape. Round is a shape. She was just uh, <laughs> would bring the house down with her voice, just the voice of an angel. And she would do a joke about um, um, about her relationships and and close it out with uh, the song from Dream Girls. And I'm telling you, I'm not going. Cause she has appeared in that show off, off Broadway. And, um, I, I found out, uh, about, um, I think it was a little over a week ago, uh, from some Facebook posts that, um, my dear friend and Virgo sister, um, Alita Apago had, played. so, um, uh, since we're talking comedians, let's, we we don't do dedications, but hey, let's dedicate tonight's show uh, to Melita. I'm all in. Let's dedicate it uh, to her. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so um, you know, let's start with. The, uh, I have a few comedians here um, that I've never seen perform before. <laughs> so yeah, fill them up on the list. <laughs> so I, I I just filled up on the list on comedians, period. And there's some people I've never seen perform. There's some people okay. I've never seen perform, but I've seen them in movies. And I didn't realize they were comedians that did, you know. I just had a big debate with a friend of mine um, mm -hmm. and that I was talking to because he said, he asked me if Jackie Gleason was on my list. And I said, well, he's more of a com comedic performer, not a stand-up yeah. comedian. Yeah, I... And and I, because I know some of the, I was looking at the list, and by, by the way, Kenny has composed this list. I just threw up a few pictures so that we have some context for some of the people that we're talking about. Um, um, who was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's some people who probably are more well known for their acting, but uh, most of the people on the list, I think, have in some way, shape, or form uh, did stand up. And again, when you're talking stand up, you're talking the art of kind of writing and crafting a joke as well as, uh, presenting it to the audience. And to me as a performer, I know for someone who can't sing, cause if I could sing, I'm sure, uh, singers can and have that power to hold the audience. So does, uh, musicians, uh, with the talent of their blending of notes. Um, but for a comic, they're they're doing the same thing and the way they kind of blend the notes and make their music is with the setup setup punch setup setup punch just the the rhythm in which they work if you see really really good and great stand-ups i know rob weinstein was a um a, a comic and a teacher who really uh helped uh at least for me kind of understand that formula of of actually writing and crafting a joke. And actually sometimes what I learned in doing comedy, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not boring folks breaking down comedy for you, but I always thought it had to be in the words, but sometimes it's not always in the words as you'll see from the comedians that we're talking about tonight. Sometimes it's in uh, the tone, the, the, the gesture, the facial expression, um, the whole body movement. There's some comics who work out just with words and some comics who do it uh, physical. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think Gallagher made our list, 
But no, no, you know, I, you know what? I forgot I, about I think Gallagher. There's always been My this bad. kind of um. My bad. I forgot this about kind Gallagher. of a stigma towards uh, comics like prop comics or 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 even ventriloquists. And but there is an art to that. Like that that was a whole section we could have went into with um uh uh, uh, uh lamb chop and yeah uh, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, who's the other one? Um, Edgar. Of, uh, Edgar and. Candace. Um, who's the guy that was on soap? Um, oh yeah, Jay. Was it Jay Sam Sandrich? Yeah, and, something like that. Oh, wh who's the black guy who used to do the puppet? I can't. I forget. I, I know it's in my actually, mind. Jeff Dur Durham is a pretty famous one who really works the circuit, and and I know there's a, there's a young lady the same manager when I did colleges. There's a young lady out now who's on YouTube and the internet who does a puppet, and she's really funny. She's really good too. Okay, she's really good um, too. But in our list, hey, and, hey, guys, if you are watching, and I know usually sometimes we're able to flash up the phone number. Um, unfortunately, because we are kind of in um, uh, kind of different locations, we can't flash up the phone number. You can always find us at KWAL Comedy on YouTube. If you are there on YouTube, please consider subscribing, giving us that thumbs up. If you're watching on Facebook, our page is called Kathy and Kenny Explain Pop Culture. So again, just thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Let us know in the comments who is your goat, who is your greatest of all time comedian. Um, hopefully it'll square with who we put at the top of our list. So we shall see. But here, let's let's dig into the list, Kenny. Bill Burr. Okay, uh, Bill Burr. Bill Burr. And I have Bill Burr on the list. And with Bill Burr, who I have not actually seen his stand-up. Have you seen I haven't his seen his comedy either, and I've heard about uh -oh. it. I've heard uh -oh. I would like it. I heard it's funny. I, you know what? He... He, he has appeared several times on the Howard Stern show. I know you're not a Howard fan. I'm not a Howard I fan. I am. Shoot me. No, don't shoot me. I'm a Howard fan. There you go. Everybody's got their cross the bear. And I do love me some Howard. And I blame um, Donna Morgan, my former roommate, uh, for shame uh, on you. It. Shame <laughs> on you. Anyway, shame on you. but I've heard him on the Howard Stern show, and he is quite hysterical. Uh, who else is on our Lewis list Black. here? Lewis Black, who is, I think, very funny. And he always did that kind of political. Uh, well, he, I, I, I loved him because he was on, um, he was in one of, uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, Acceptance. Mm -hmm. uh, no, um, was it Acceptance or is it Accept or? The show about the college kids who make up a college and they need him to be the dean. Is it called? It's called accepted, isn't it? Accepted, yeah, accepted, accepted, yeah. Okay, yeah, he yeah. Was he, he was, that. and he was, he was in a couple other things, but he was hilarious and accepted. You know. Um, next one is Eddie Griffith. Eddie Griffith, who who a lot I, of people know as Undercover Brother. Undercover Brother, and see, that's probably his most famous movie. But I like that movie with DJ Quell. Uh, with the uh, crazy eyes, um, what is that movie? Oh, 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 oh! Um, we need oh, I Ed. Know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> oh, you need either uh, Dion or Ed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know because I have that movie in my. Um, Where they were a band, uh, Zoe yeah, and Chanel. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Crazy and, eyes. You looking at my picture, Janet? <laughs> you looking at Janet? <laughs> <laughs> you looking at my picture, Janet? Ed. Yeah, see, we need Dion or Ed. What is here. what is that and movie? They're not oh here. God. They're probably getting ready because, uh, just by the way, as a side note, they will be on and probably carrying next week's show. Uh, where oh, we they're doing kinda, it next week. I, I it was on the list for next week. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll, you we'll get need that to organized. touch base with them. I need to touch base with them and get that organized for next week. Okay, if, that's great. If wait. not, then we need to. We need. We we're no, no, no. Them next week. Next. Date. Yeah, next week, next week is next week. Next week, I'll, okay. I'll get I'll get them in line. Um, uh, what is that show? What what show? New guy, the new guy. The new guy. That's the, new it, guy. the new guy. You look at that picture, Janet. <laughs> okay. The new guy. Who Crazy eyes. Oh, uh, we got Tracy Morgan. 
Tracy Morgan. And he Tracy is, Morgan. Oh, you know who we left out of this list? Or and maybe you didn't know him, but he was uh, a comic who died way too young. Um, Robin Harris. He oh, that's great. right. No, I know Robin Harris. But baby kids. Baby's kids. We I don't like die. I love Robin. We don't die. We multiply. We multiply. Baby's kids. And he was. He also comic. became. Yeah, he also became an actor because he was in. Um, I'm going to get you sucker. He was also in Harlem Nights, and he was in. Um, he was in Do the Right Thing. I loved him in Do the Right Thing. And and again, he was one of the comics that I met and uh, got to know at Uptown Comedy Club. Uh, again, during that whole. Um, was he al- was he always that funny? Always, always <laughs> brought the house down. Audrey's in the house, down. huh? Oh, Audrey's Audrey. in the house. Audrey's in the house. Hey, Audrey, thanks so much for stopping by with a really good comic. And I think he does come up later on he our does list. Come up on the list. Hey, 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 hey! Give me some respect. I get no respect. No, that wasn't that a good an Roddy impression? Did. That was an impression. That was an impression. Scary. That was, bad. Okay, next on our list is Adam Sandler. <laughs> and you know what? And Adam Sandler was one of the ones. Like, I really, I, I really. Although I did like the Hanukkah song, but I, I didn't really care for the. I felt like he played the same character. But I have to tell you, not so much stand up, but I absolutely love. Um, Big Daddy, and I didn't like a lot of his movies because he played the same role all the time. Yeah, I like his. But I like his later movies. Big Daddy, I loved, and I don't even know whether it was him in it that I loved, but I really like that story. And John Stewart I, I, was good in that as well. Yeah, and, I, I like his but, later movies, movie, like like uh, um, um, the ones he does with Jennifer Aniston and and Drew just Barrymore. Just go with it. I love that. Just go. One too. Just go with it. I love. I don't. I don't like. I don't like um, the one where she loses her memory. I don't like that one. But oh, first dates. Yeah, fifty first. I don't like fifty first dates. Creepy about that. <laughs> but yeah, but blended, blended is good. Blended. Blended with um Adam Sandler and um Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore, yeah. who well, I think him and Drew Barrymore, they do have a good on. They have a good. They have. They, they have. A, they have a good um, chemistry. And he and he has a good chemistry, I think, with Jennifer Aniston too. Yeah, he does. He does. He did, did two. He did two. He did. Just go with it. He did the movie that's on Netflix that was pretty good, I thought. Um, um, Audrey has another one. Robin Williams. That's another good one. Next Robin on our list is you know what? I originally put Cat Stevens, but I meant uh-huh. to put Cat Williams. Cat Cat Stevens. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry. And I realized right before the show my mistake. Well, Cat Williams. Again, Kenny, why don't you look at the pictures because I didn't follow your order because I just oh. kind of started. Oh, okay. You know, so who's that? Got, who's that? I kind of was playing Steve? like the break, like the um, you know, the Sesame Street. One of these things is not, like, not the like the other. Yeah, Cat Williams. But actually, the all of these things are kind of similar. Do you know what they all have in common? They were all on Saturday Night Live? They were all Saturday Night Live regulars. So, okay. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Silverman was on Saturday Night Live? Uh, yes. Yes, she was. I've never heard Sarah Silverman comedy. You never? Uh, and again, she I've was never listened to comics. Stuff. I remember from my days back in the in the 90s doing comedy. Oh, yeah. She was she was part of that grind. Her, Louis C.K., a, a lot of these folks. Tracy Morgan, I don't really remember. That might have been, he might have been after my time, uh, my stint doing comedy, but I do remember Adam Sandler. I do remember, I remember being on shows with folks like Louis C.K. and and Sarah Silverman back in the, um, in those early days, in those, yeah. in those late night days where we, um, uh, again, for, for comedians in the city, and I don't know if it's still like this, but if you were living and working in New York City, you might get a spot at the comic strip, but it might be like two o'clock in the morning and you know, to five people. And chances are you're not gonna get paid. If you get paid, you might get three dollars, you might get five dollars. So for me living in Brooklyn, that wasn't even cab there. Uh, where you would make money is going out to Long Island and playing clubs like uh Chuckles or I, I know there was one club I would play and and they enjoyed me and 
And they would call me. And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, if I can kind of go off on a tangent for a second. Go, um, go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this club in Long Island, I would play, and they would, you know, say how funny I was. And oh, it, it, uh, the owner said, "Oh, you're like you're like a black Rosie O'Donnell." And I'm thinking, no, I don't want to be a black Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, you know, why can't Rosie O'Donnell be the white Kathy Walker? You there know? you go. <laughs> there you go. But um. You know, you always I, I, have these uh, comparisons. I, I, I want to break for a minute. Audrey is uh, bringing up a nice list, and we have a lot of those people on our list, a lot except of for on the list, except, except for, for Bill for Murray. Bill Murray, I don't because again, he's, he's more of a comic actor, not a, exactly. a comedian. Yeah, and you know what is interesting? I think too, like for some of the comic uh, or the comedians, um, when they do dramatic turns in movies. I think, or even comic actors who are known for their comedy, I think they do a really, really good job because really I think the thing people don't talk about or want to talk about, that for that comedy, a lot of that comedy does come out of pain yeah. or comes from comes from this yeah. painful part. And you know, when we talk about some of the comics later, um, we can dig into that. But they have like, that like, in there. Like, and I think Bill Murray is one of those good examples because some of his dramatic turns, I think, are quite good. Although now yeah, and, and, are, and, and you've had people silly, like Adam Sandler do dramatic roles. You've had oh, people yeah. like um, Jamie Foxx do oh, dramatic I, roles. I, you know what? I was watching the Adam Sandler movie with Don Cheadle. Um, oh, goodness. I am blanking out tonight. I'm just... Uh, you did a movie with Don Cheadle? Traveling. He did a movie with Don Cheadle. It was uh, it was pretty good. Where he um he, he lost his family in 9/11. I can't. I think it was called Rain on Me. Um, okay, yeah, I think I think I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Also, too, um, also too, um, I believe Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy has done some serious roles. Um, um, Richard Pryor has done some serious roles. Um, um, uh. Uh, who else has done some serious roles that are co comics? Um, but I think, and, and I know we don't have you don't have Jim Carrey on the list. But no, he I, is, does his, he, is he more of a comic actor? But he, he, he made comedian? his bones doing stand up. He he actually was one of the last people to see Rodney Dangerfield alive. Again, this was this is research I'm taking from a Howard Stern interview. So. Um, <laughs> But oh, um, boy. but he actually would play Dangerfields, and um, and again uh, started off as as a comic, as a stand up, which got him the gig of In Living Color, which yeah. again opened all sorts of doors. And it was so funny because also from a Howard Stern interview, uh, David Allen Greer uh, was actually making fun of him about his first movie. Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Yeah, good luck with that. And yeah. I think he even offered him a role in the movie. And David Allen Greer was like, that's a career killer. You know, didn't take it. And again, actually, Ace Ventura Pet Detective kind of launched him after that. The mask. If I was going to know. give him the role that Tone Look had. But um, it. Again, the serious tone was in the Truman Show, but yeah. don't even send me down the rabbit hole on the Truman Show because to me, the end of the movie should have been the beginning. I never I, seen I that know. show, never seen the Truman Show. <sighs> you never seen the Truman Show, okay? Never seen uh, the anyway, show. I, get, I could go down the rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, let's, rabbit let's not go there, let's keep on with our but, list. But before we go on with the list, let me let me uh take a moment as I usually do midway through the show to first of all thank you guys for watching thank you for being a part of Kathy and Kenny explain pop culture uh we appreciate you stopping by please don't forget to hit that uh thumbs up like button if you want to support the show check out the links in the description you can buy us a coffee so that we can keep putting pretty graphics on the screen so we just appreciate you being here so once again thank you and uh, thanks for kind of hanging out with us on a Saturday night, as one is like to do. Um, let's Benny see. Hill. Ed, Ed Brown's in the house with Benny list. Hill. 
Ed Brown's in the house with Benny Hill, and I, I stuck to American comics, so. Oh, I'm so sorry. okay, so that there's no, and I, I, I thought of Benny Hill. Uh, also on our list, Cat, Cat Stevens, you wrote. Yeah, Cat, Cat Williams. Williams. <laughs> and Stephen Wright. And Stephen Wright. And and you know and you know um um. That's Cat why you got. You know, you know, yeah, I know, I know, but you know, Cat Cat Williams, you, you know what I, I I like him for his role as an actor, more than his comedy, like his role that he did in Norbert. <laughs> Norbert. I love, I love, I love him playing the pimp, the retired pimp in Norbert, like this in a small town, like he's like, oh man. And then the girl falls down. It's rated white women. And then when the one guy and, goes, and Eddie Griffin goes, "Oh, my prayers have been answered." Well, you better move because I prayed for a Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa's saying she loves all the comedians from the Deaf uh, Deaf Comedy Jam, and that in the '90s was a big. Mm. It was part of that whole comedy boom because. I yeah. think uh, there were a lot of folks doing comedy in the in the seventies and um, in the eighties. We saw kind of the the fruits of their labor because a lot of the top TV shows were all were being centered around comics like Roseanne, like uh, uh, Brett Butler, the Bernie you know, Mac like show, Tim, Steve um, Harvey, Bernie Mac show, Steve uh, Harvey, Steve Harvey, um, uh, um, DL Hughes had a show, didn't he? Home Improvement. It's like you couldn't, you couldn't, um, you know, throw a stick without finding uh, some channel with uh, a series, a comic as a yeah, filled with a comic as the lead. But Jeffrey Wright, I always liked his humor. It was so just dry, dry and obtuse, and 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 I think it was a combination of not just what he was saying, but also his delivery. So he was he was awesome. Okay, um, Kevin Hart and um, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Martin. I think the first. I think. I think I first saw him, of course, like a lot of people on Saturday Night Live, and he had that comic routine where he sang the song about King Tut. King Tut. Mm -hmm. King Tut. <laughs> Funky Tut. <laughs> <laughs> Born in Arizona, <laughs> moved to Babylon. Babylon. King Tut. <laughs> Why do we know these things? I don't know, but he was serious when he was on Saturday Night Live doing that. He was serious, going. To, he was serious. King, oh, you Tut. know, you know, we didn't have on this list too. Who? Who's, who's again? Um, oh my gosh, uh, Andy Kaufman. Because all I can think is him just standing there. Uh, oh yeah, a record player. Yeah, my God, uh, you the day. Said, my guy. And then he just stand there and wait for the chorus again, <laughs> just doing the Mighty <laughs> Mouse theme, which I know, like that—that that was his act. That, that was, was it. That was the act. But and not just that, he just did all these kind of just really performance arty kind of things that I thought was hysterical. Oh. And him as Laka on Taxi too yeah. is um, Ed Brown put Ed Brown put one up that well he put up Paul Lynn and Paul Lynn I would really consider a comic actor but he also put up Flip Wilson Flip Wilson oh I, I forgot, forgot about, about Flip, Flip Wilson. Wilson Geraldine 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 Flip Wilson the Flip Wilson show we are showing our age moving right along <laughs> Kevin Hart. Oh, Kevin sorry. Hart, of course. Kevin, Kevin Hart. I'm moving way too fast. Which, which, right. which is, which is a native of Philadelphia area. So, I, I know native. a guy. I know a guy who said he's a Philly native. I know a guy who went to school with him. Okay. And but he said he, he was that was loud. Funny, he, was that, he was that loud and annoying in school. He said, "Yeah." That that um. <laughs> well, and again, I know you know he's done the movies. He's done everything, and 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 the stand up, and I mean he's funny and all. But I just thought it was funny him during when the Eagles won the Super Bowl a couple of years back. <laughs> and he's up there grabbing and kissing on the trophy like he won it. I'm like, dude, you know, he won nothing. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. Lisa says Kevin Hart was one of her husband's students. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. That's Kevin Hart was that. one of her husband's students. 
part of that six degrees of separation. So it's like, hey, and Lisa's our oh, cousin. So and and and, like and Ed Brown, Ed Brown put somebody else that I forgot to put on the list. Philly's own David Brenner. Ah, oh, there you go, David Brenner, oh, who made David, an appearance in Fame. Got, you, huh? Huh? Who made an appearance in Fame? Was it David, David Brenner in Fame? Was no, he in Fame? It was. No, it was Richard Belzer, who's not on your list. Oh, either. Richard Belzer. Okay. Richard okay. Belzer. One of them, one of them is dead, though, right? One of them is dead. Huh? Is you David Brenner think, dead? Uh, David Brenner, I think, did pass away. Uh, Gary Shandling also it was. A he passed really away. And I should. He was in a Marvel movie. I should have put him on there. Why is it every week? We can't get through a week. It used to be we couldn't get through a week without you eating. Now we finally got you to stop eating. Now we can't get through a week or a show without the mention of comic books or superheroes or what's that about? I don't know. Get on with the rest of the list. I just, I, I just don't, don't, no. Do you life. see the wall? I mean, do you see the wall behind me? Do you see the wall behind me? I know, but that's do you not want what this me to show pull is. Out, do, do you want me to pull out my Batman underwear? No, you don't. That's, you don't want that. No, nobody wants that. That's why you have your own podcast, the Nerd Nation podcast. It was we don't, we, don't, we, 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 we put that, that on returns, hiatus. We put that on hiatus. It's on hiatus, right? but when that returns, you can do you can comic book your heart out. Okay. Although I am All curious right. your thoughts about this new, um, uh, what is it, Suicide Squad? Also, too. Can you watch it on HBO Max or do you have to wait? Because I wanted to watch uh, Black Widow, but uh, on Disney Plus. No, you have, to, you have to wait. We're talking about it's $30. Like $29.99. Yes, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. I saw I'm that like, in the movie I theater. No I actually saw that in the movie theater, and I'm going to tell you, you can wait until October when it comes on Disney for free. Okay, wait for October. All right. Uh, speaking of Brown, you know, when we were talking about Brown Murray, I forgot to add, did you see the new trailer of the new Ghostbusters movie? I have not seen the new trailer for the it new Ghostbusters. It looks really movie. good. It looks really good. One of and the kids from Stranger Things is the star. I, I'm figure. a little annoyed because I thought the female version of Ghostbusters was good and should have gotten. I more did play. too. And I, look, George told me I was the only one that thought that. I thought the female version was good, but they're scratching that and they're going to the male version. Egon is dead, and his grandson finds these ghosts or whatever, and finds the truck, car, finds the car and stuff. Uh, I yeah I would have uh, yeah I I thought it should have gotten uh, more play definitely more play. yeah it should have right, got more play back to the list back to the list Chris Rock uh Chris Rock wait a minute you had one before that though didn't did you have some before that we have okay some go ahead go ahead you you can no uh, I thought you had a... I can go back okay no that's okay go to the next person we did that okay Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Now you've met Chris Rock. Met Chris Rock. Worked with Chris Rock. Um, also, you know what? At one point, his brother Tony Rock uh, did comedy as well, and he was a sweetheart. I loved him. Um, but yeah, met and worked uh, with Chris Rock. Really cool, sweet guy. But I think I probably knew and liked his brother, and maybe because his brother was so young. And, you know, and maybe back then in my 30s, when I had kids calling me miss, it made me feel important. <laughs> like I was a bit of an old head. But no, but uh, really cool uh, guy. And I, I think I remember one time just like seeing him on the street in New York and, you know, and uh, be probably before his like mega fame, before um, like, you know, he really took off. But, you know, he was the kind of guy oh, who would, Hold on, hold on. Yeah, Kathy, you, Kathy, with you. Kathy, hmm? Kathy, Kathy, I, I, I do like Audrey's comment. She said, "We, you know, because I talk about comic book stuff too much." She goes, "We could be talking about how Die Hard is a Christmas movie." Oh my God, I can't believe. You know what? That's, I saw my, that's my girl. Audrey's my girl. That's my girl right there. Audrey's my girl. It's my girl right there. You know what? <laughs> Maybe we oh, need man. some criteria to be a true pop culture kid, you know? <laughs> okay. 
Uh, oh, very good point. It's goodness. like very good point, what Audrey. Are opening Christmas up. in July, Die Hard, which also has some comedic elements in it. Yes, it does, Ed. Yes, it does. He's my people, Audrey and Ed. They're my people. Lord have mercy. My people are out there who know that Die Hard is no, a, not. a great Bruce Willis movie, probably one of his top three, and uh, action movie all day long. It is the goat of action movies. But it's also a But Christmas it is movie. not. And I repeat, people, listen carefully. Listen. And here, let's get rid of Kenny so that we can focus, so that we can all be on the same page. Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. Uh, one day I'm okay, going to anyway, control. Back to the list. Back to, back the, to list. the list. Looking at the list. Uh, Wanda Sykes Hall, or now it's just Wanda Sykes. And uh, again, another comedian um, uh, that, again, I remember working with back, back in the day um, at different venues and events. And again, to school people. Jerry Seinfeld, I was never big enough to really work with him. But I, I do remember when I was first starting comedy, like, like I think I did one open mic in New York, and 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 that was probably thanks to my friend Daryl Lina who brought me up to the Uptown Comedy Club, and I remember being in Central Park and 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 Jerry Seinfeld and um oh Mario what was it not Mario Cantone um I can't think of the comic's name it'll come to me later and. You guys might not know him. He was never really a household name. But anyway, they were just hanging out in the park. And I I met Jerry Seinfeld. And I I, I wanted to get his autograph because for some reason I was into that sort of thing. Anyway, um, on the back of one of my business cards, he just wrote, be funny, Jerry Seinfeld. But it was one of those things that kind of, ooh, I had Jerry Seinfeld's autograph and uh, a notebook that I used to carry around to write my jokes and different things in. I actually had that taped to the front of it uh, as my kind of muse and inspiration. When I, so when I, when I, when I, Jerry when I Seinfeld come... is the comedian's comedian, like as far as the art of crafting a joke, set up punch, set up punch. Um, I mean, some people don't you know, like him or think he's hysterical or or, or you know, the, you know, he doesn't make your stomach sore laughing for some folks. For some, he does. But yeah. as far I think as he's the funny. craft he's funny. of comedy, yeah, you know, he he's just he's a master class. And again, and I think when you have that boom of everybody kind of getting their specials, getting their specials, and yeah, there were people who had specials who had an hour who could kill it for forty five, maybe even sixty minutes, um, but. Again, the test of time, Jerry Seinfeld has been able to do that consistently because once you do that special, that um, HBO, Showtime, half hour, 30 minutes, 40 minute, 50 minute set on TV, it gets tossed in the garbage because when you go to a club, you can't do that material because everybody knows it. Now, I mean, there might be jokes or bits that you have that are your signature bits I get no respect or that people know you for and even when you do those you got to kind of bring something to that game either add it tweak it or or expand on it um because again doing specials like that can totally totally eat away at um at your material and that's okay. why I like again I'm sorry Kenny I got to go back to my reference material because Howard Stern being somewhat oh of a boy. comedian himself, loves oh to interview comedians. So I get to watch these interviews and hopefully he's on hiatus this summer and each week. And actually this week, you probably would have liked listening to Howard Stern because this week was superhero week on the Howard Stern show. So they were doing all the interviews with like, like George Clooney, Robert oh, Downey nice. Jr., uh, Charlize. If Theron, they were doing superhero uh, week, George Clooney should not have been a part of that conversation. Well, even he said he was, you know, a total disaster. And okay, Batman. good. He, good, he good. knows that. Him, him and Brandon Roth. Kenny, read yeah, him it. And, look it up in him, the him, him, him and Brandon Roth. Picture, but it's in there. <laughs> oh, who's next? Who's next? 
comic relief. I kind of grouped these comics together. Okay, um, great. Because you actually had you had Whoopi Goldberg and then um, Billy Crystal on the list, but I know Robin Williams was up further because I think somebody. Um, and you know what? I'm not even putting all those. You guys keep doing it. Keep just keep 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 it up with that die hard thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> somebody <laughs> did mention Robin. You're not gonna, you're not gonna put the comment on the, on on the, on the screen. I, I can't even see that comment. Uh, like I said, I'm not at home. So I don't have access to everything I would have access to because uh, we're doing the show on the road. So so there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm, go I'm going back up to an earlier comment. Uh, Robin Williams was on the list. And I know what some people might be thinking that, um, oh, et to daddy, et to Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. You know what? No high for you. Um, uh, there should be a show dedicated. Oh my gosh. I I, I'm all for I'm all for a diehard uh show, especially with the diehard commercial with the battery and everything. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. I think in any be. case, um Billy uh, Crystal, uh, I know some people consider him a comedic actor. Um, he started off again, with comedy, comedy. Billy Crystal, uh, Robin Williams, and Whoopi Goldberg were uh, the three comedians who kind of launched comic relief that gave a lot of comedians exposure as well as raising money for a good cause. Um, mm -hmm. But even so, even Whoopi Goldberg, people might consider her a comedic actress, but both of them have done like these one man, one woman shows you know, on Broadway where they are pulling out these characters and and actually, you know, again, mastering that timing. But yeah, definitely. I, I still I still I still use Whoopi Goldberg's joke from her HBO special when she first came out. PG like Mary was with Jesus, except for she knew who the father is. I'm sure it was like much funnier when Whoopi did it, but okay. Uh, Whoopi, 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 Whoopi like, I would like. Whoopi, it's nothing I would... like seeing live comedy, but yeah, uh, as saying when he was in high school, he went to a club on South Street. I think it was called Going Bananas, and saw yeah. a young Rob Schneider. Pretty cool uh, to see way back in the day. That is uh, really well, kind of cool, and, and I, it I, is kind of funny when I think about some of the people I've done open mics with, who you know, again. You know, folks like Jim Gaffigan and and you know just uh, you know a lot of a lot of the comics that you see on TV now. Some I can't even remember. Um, another really cool comic uh, friend uh, of mine, Jane Condon, who works all uh, across the Eastern Seaboard and okay. is, is still at it. And she was uh, this Connecticut you know mom. Uh, coming down to the city to do comedy and would just totally kill and crush it. Um, oh, you know what? That is a good one who is not on our list, Ed. Sinbad. And that is Sinbad. Yeah, Sinbad. And I remember actually going yeah. to a concert um, to see Sinbad. I think it was at Cheney uh, State University with our parents, which, you know, is weird. You think, oh, you don't really want to see comedy with your parents because they'll be cussing and fussing or whatever, but not with a Sinbad show because it was really clean. And again, even my show wasn't terribly dirty because not only did my parents come, but my other parents came. And when I say other parents, I'm talking about, you know, the Rays, the LRBs, <laughs> the, the Robinsons. Um, uh, there were a couple boy, of shows boy. that I did. But they, um, they, 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 they never all came to see one of my shows. I'm just saying. Okay. I feel well, a certain kind of way. But no, we had, well, well, but while, no we had, while we had, while we had, while we had, to where, Kenny, I, I'm sorry, I'm talking. I went to where they were. I think they were on a trip, uh, one of their vacation trips at the Boston Inner Harbor. And it just so happened that I was actually playing uh, that whole week at Boston's Inner Harbor. Um, I actually stayed in what was called a comedy condo which these were things of legend, which were these condos that they would put the comics up at. And they were kind of known for not being that great a place mm. to stay. This one in Boston was pretty nice. I'm, I'm sorry, not Boston. It was in Baltimore. But the only problem was 
it was in Baltimore. I, I did, but um, I did, but I did. Baltimore I, was uh, only, I think, I think Baltimore that year beat Camden as uh, one of the uh, I, most dangerous but I did, cities I did, in America. I, I did shows in Philly. They lived there. <laughs> no, but seriously, when well, we had yeah, Whoopi Baltimore Goldberg, her, when we had yeah, when we had I Whoopi Goldberg on, I just wanted to mention how that is my celebrity crush, Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. Okay. Moving on go. with the rest of the list. Moving on with the rest of the list. Oh yeah. All right. Oh, we um, have my other celebrity the... crush on here, Sandra Bernhardt. Okay. Sandra Bernhardt, uh, Andrew Dice Clay, and as well as Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, that was another comic. I think I met her at Caroline's. Oh, uh, really? Oddly enough, yeah. Ellen, and you know what I always thought was interesting about Ellen DeGeneres, or at least, you know, uh, and again, I, I, I had my own biases too, because I always thought kind of like the East Coast comedians were, I wouldn't say funnier, but I think, you know, when you're playing clubs in places like Philly and New York City, and, you know, you have to have like a pace and a rhythm to like really boom, 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 boom. Like, you know, set up, set up, set up, punch, set up, set up, set up, punch. Like you have to keep the laughs coming. And sometimes the comics from LA, and I know um, Ellen wasn't from LA. She, uh, although I think she might've um, uh, developed there, but I always thought her comedy was very, very interesting and, and had that kind of, had that rhythm almost uh, like, the speed of the um, East Coast comics, but I always thought it was odd when she got her first TV show that um, they had her doing all this physical comedy, very much in the in the trying to make her like this Lucille Ball kind of physical comedian. And I thought that's not even who she is. Her, her you know, her comedy was all based on on like wordplay, and I, I don't know. It was one of those examples where I guess. You know, enough the money throws at the, you. Yeah, the producers got it wrong. Yeah, yeah, they. I Pretty thought much. they totally got it wrong. So in a way, I was kind of happy um, for her when she came out because, you know, I think that was her being more true to herself and what she wanted to do. I always, I had this conflict when I was first doing comedy, where I would play the uptown clubs up in Harlem, the black clubs, and folks would tell me. That you know, oh, you know, your act, you you talk too white. Mm, wow, like that's a thing. I know it's not, not really. Uh, but then I actually went to a club, you know, downtown club, and you know, the the owner or whatever, you know, I I couldn't get a regular spot because my act, um, my act was too black or too urban, I guess. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. For the black clubs and two, and two black, black for, for the, the white, white clubs. clubs. Uh, the lesson I had to take, and actually it was a lesson that helped me, is that, um, you know what? I needed to be too Kathy for every club. So I had to really reach in, be me, find material that I identify with. I didn't realize my material did have a theme that revolved around race a little bit, but it actually did. But it's only then when I kind of listened to me and where I wanted to go and where I found the funny that I actually got work and did spend like maybe a year and a half actually working once I left Colgate um, as a comedian doing colleges and, and doing like actual paid, paid gigs <laughs> and comedy. So um uh, but yeah, just being true to yourself is the moral of my story. But if we look at some of the other comics on that list, Dave Chappelle. Who my son told me was the greatest comic of all time. I said, he, eh, he's close. To he, he's close. He's, he's close. close. He's, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. I, I, I have three comics who were my, like, my, you know, like top three. And these were comics that I watched and listened to a lot of their material to help inspire me. Um, but they're not, we, we'll get to them on the list uh, 
soon. Okay. Oh, you know, here's another one we didn't have on the list. Cedric Cedric, no, I forgot to put Cedric Entertainer and I forgot to put DL Hughley. Who oh, part of, who, yeah, but I put That's the other key, and I forgot forward. to put Steve Harvey. I forgot to put Steve Harvey because I personally don't like him, so I forgot to put him on there. But I did put That's um cool. Bernie Mac. I did put Bernie Mac, who is the other king of comedy in there. And you know what? I think, yep. Speaking of Bernie Mac <laughs> and the kings of comedy, oh, and you know who we didn't have? The late Paul Mooney. Who? Uh, yes, Paul Mooney. Recently. Yes, Paul Mooney. Yeah. yeah. Paul Mooney. But is, who's that? Who's that above Eddie Murphy? Bernie Mac. Oh, that's only, only those two. Okay, Bernie Mac. I thought was hilarious. I thought Bernie Mac. Bernie had Mac he was still funny. Been a, Bernie Mac. And you know was, what? And his 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 TV show actually did it. I think a good job of ca capturing the essence of his stand up. Yeah, it did. And I think maybe it's because he had those monologues and stuff. Uh, look, I even even now, like his when Kings of Comedy, um I I still laugh, you know, because you know, him downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so you just blurt out the punchline and just leave it there. Him downstairs. I ain't scared of you. He actually there uh, uh, Prince actually used one of his uh, uh um um, uh, one of his one Prince actually used him on one of his songs. Oh, he goes, I ain't, his... I ain't scared of you, you know. And when Prince actually used that bite on one of his songs, speaking of which, Shaggy actually did a whole song and had a big hit based on the other comic. And you see in the picture, Eddie Murphy, um. I, I think from his uh what was the red jumpsuit delirious um his stand up special no that, no from yeah. raw raw was it was raw me. okay it raw, wasn't I mean, me. delirious delirious was i remember delirious it came out in like 83 84 and we all through my senior trip when we were in we were like we kept saying goony goo goo all through the senior trip and laughing because when delirious came out goony goo goo that was it that was just like Goody goo goo, <laughs> like you know, we told the whole Eddie Murphy, "Hey, hey, Ralph, I've been watching you, and I know that you know that I know that you know." <laughs> so when I've been over, uh, you know, it, it's just funny. It's just funny. Um, well, a lot of people consider Eddie Murphy the goat. The goat, yeah, the goat, yeah, yeah. And he, it's, he's his goat. movies are funny. I wouldn't make him he, the goat. I wouldn't make him the goat, but his movies are hilarious. And some of the things that I mean, even his Dude, voice hey, work how as did you feel about coming to America too. I saw it, it wasn't as funny as coming to America one, but it was very nostalgic. It was very You're nostalgic. Like our father. You're like our father. He didn't he didn't care for it either. I don't know. I don't know. No, no. I cared for it because I thought it was very nostalgic. I thought it told a good story. It wasn't as funny as the first one, but it told a good story. Mommy and I, we watched that and cracked. I up. love, I love the scene. I love the scene when they sang the Prince song, of course. Of course. I you love, know, I, I love, I love, the, I love the, I love the old that you work into every show. Yeah, I know. I, I do. You know I do. that, don't you? I do. Yeah, I do. And I love the scene where. Um, That's why the viewership drops off. You know why? <laughs> Is my fault. Okay, go to the next set of comics, please. <laughs> you know, just go, just go to the next set of comics. Oh, <laughs> Sam Kenison and Phyllis Diller. I thought it was kind of funny that both these pictures are kind of like ah in your ah! face kind of picture. Sam Ken Sam Kenison was that guy ah, <laughs> and and I loved Sam Sam Kenison. His the stand up he did on HBO was I could still watch that today and. God forgive give me. I some of the stuff is just pure evil, but it's just so so funny. Sam Kennison was talk about that guy. dark side of comedy. He definitely and Phyllis Diller, who's actually, Diller. believe it or not, black. Uh, come again. Phyllis Diller was mixed. Oh, okay. 
I did not know that. Yes, she was. You learn the most interesting things yes. on Kathy and Kenny. To, yeah, yeah. Explain yes. pop culture. I don't culture. know whether you need to know them. I don't know why yes. you need to yes. know them. But and, 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 and Ed, I totally agree. What did Ed say? As long as it's I, not and Ed, I did I did forget I did forget Groucho Marx, Ed. And I, I'm sorry, I forgot Groucho Marx. We got Groucho Marx. But Groucho Marx never really did stand up, did he? He was more of a comic actor, comedic actor. He never because somebody no, said he to me, stand up. He, he just because somebody started off in, like with the vaudeville days. There yeah. was another comic. Um, but he started with vaudeville, uh, day, vaudeville days with his brothers uh, as an actor. But still, he but uh, but still he did he did uh, I believe he did do stand up. Uh, there was another stand-up. And again, when I did stand-up comedy, it, not only did I, you know, work to learn about writing and crafting jokes and, and, and really being a steward of what I consider this art form, it was also a time in my life where I felt like in order to learn and understand, I had to read about comics. So I read a ton of comic biographies during that time um, for people like our next um, artist, but there was a comic named Fred Allen who uh, oh, yeah. really, uh, really had a lot of uh, a lot of material, a lot of insight on the craft of comic. Uh, I read a book about his life and that whole uh, idea and concept of vaudeville. And one of the other people that I, whose book I read, and just getting insight into what it took to be a comedian was um, Joan Rivers. Now, you might not have liked her or liked everything you know she said or did, but again, just as far as, it, it kind of in the vein of, of, of um, Jerry Seinfeld, just that craft of comedy. And there is a movie called, uh, or documentary called Body of Work, that for anybody who is a fan or lover of comedy and aspiring comedian is a must watch just to understand like her work ethic and people I think want to be on stage. Um, there is nothing more intoxicating than the power of the laughter and that energy that, that you get when you do something that brings that, it, you know, it, it's love, it's warmth, it's acceptance. And I know for performers, they can, they can really crave that, but um there is an art to it, and I think so, some of the comedians on our list are true artists. And yeah, um, I really yeah. Joan Rivers, Rivers um, in that Chris, category. Also, too, to some degree, Rodney Dangerfield, especially in the fact that again, when this picture was taken, you know, like a, a young Rodney Dangerfield really tried to pursue comedy, and it it didn't pan out for him. He actually went back to what they call the day job. And he didn't really get his success or his props till uh, later in life. So um, I, I heard Chris Rock tell a story uh, when he first appeared, first time he was on television, he was on a Joan Rivers show. And that was the day that her husband had committed suicide. And he thought that the show was going to get canceled. But she said, OK, the show must go on. And they kept the show going. And then and the show goes on. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think I remember that show. And I, I wonder, was I, I'm thinking that was a show we actually did at uh, B. Smith's restaurant uh, where they had an upstairs cab, uh, cabaret area. And I think that was the show that Wanda was on. And it was it was all, I think, uh, ladies of color. I, I think I do remember that show, Daddy. And I know some of the shows kind of bleed all in together. Um but that might have been one you guys came up to New York for. And I drove them up to New York. And the first sight we saw coming out of the Lincoln Tunnel was someone relieving themselves against the wall. Wow, nice. <laughs> and, hey, and, 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 and to your comment, um, Jonathan, when it was more of a TV actor, and not any, I, I, I honestly didn't think he was well, that Well, he actually did start out as a stand-up. Really? Yes. Yeah. And he was I remember when he, when he, when again, he came this, to Mindy, I stopped watching. Just like a lot of the actors who got their TV series in the um, 80s and 90s, they, uh, from doing stand-up, like, again, that might have been how they got seen, but again, millions of people got to know them on TV in these character roles, but a lot of them came from doing stand-up, hon yeah. honing their craft. Yes, we got exactly, Ed. 
J Jimmy Walker. Yep. Dynamite. Of course, now he's like hawking like what insurance or something. Yeah, or, I guess. Um, I don't, yeah, he's he's not that funny anymore. Ooh. Who we got next on the well, list? You know what? We're over an hour and we got to wrap up because I turned the air off in the hotel room. So okay. the noise. Well, I've been trying to. I've been trying to go on, but you keep going off on tangents. Well, I mean. I know, comedy but you keep going my off. wheelhouse. I, I know, say, but you oh, keep going Kathy, off. We're going to talk about comics, but you know what? Don't add any depth okay. to the show. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I add depth. Add depth. Okay, Let's so we got Don Rickles and Red Fox. Official and silly. I know <laughs> Don Rickles and Red Fox. Don Rickles. A lot of people might not have liked him, but he was funny because I tell you, he was funny. funny. <laughs> he was funny. <laughs> he was funny. <laughs> And Red Fox, of course, Fox. Uh, Mr. Sanford, Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you. <laughs> and I, so I, actually, I'm sorry, I still remember him in Harlem Nights going, yeah, sunshine. But, you know. <laughs> and actually, I think most people know him for Sanford and his son, but his, his comedy was, was a lot bluer, a yeah. lot uh, more risque. All right, we, we are moving on. We are moving on. We got George Burns. George Burns. You know, a friend of mine was getting on my case. Uh, I don't smoke anymore, but he was saying how a friend of his smoked. And I said, well, you know, because a friend of his smoked cigars and he was just in the hospital. I said, well, you can't play with cigars because George Burns lived to be 100. Like, that's not that's not a thing. So and I, I, I like George Burns. And I liked him. As a comedy duel with Gracie Allen, um, oh, gosh, they were good. George together. Burns and Gracie Allen. Um, oh God, I love that TV show because that was so funny. Stiller and Mira. Oh my yeah, gosh. Stiller and Mira. Yeah, and so also in that picture we got Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory, who became more of a political activist later, wow. um, but was also very funny, and Bill Cosby. Who oh, wow. was hilarious without using profanity? As that as is great. Give us give us a chocolate cake. cake. <laughs> and but but no, I mean, but, but 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 yeah, but Dad, my name is Jesus Christ. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, Bill Cosby, which Eddie Murphy did in his in his um in his in in uh, Raw, the stand up routine Raw, where he said in delirious he cursed so much. That Bill Cosby gave him a call and said, "You can't be using foul, 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 and oh. all your comedy." And 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 Eddie Murphy called Richard Pryor, and Richard Pryor said, "Are you, are your people laughing when you say it?" <laughs> well, <laughs> tell Bill to have a coke and a smile and shut up. <laughs> so Bill Cosby, okay, Mom's Mabley, Mom's Mabley, who is who was. Hilarious, and that was one of the albums we had in our house that we weren't allowed to touch, and it was very scary to look at the album because she was like, "Yeah, she she was mugging serious. She was but mugging seriously." Mabley album, um, but the whole but but there's a documentary on Miles Mabley, I think, on Hulu, and if you watch this documentary, um, you get uh, it's, no, it's on HBO, it's on HBO, but if you watch this documentary anyway on Miles Mabley, you get so to that means you Netflix should be able to pull it up on HBO Max. Yeah, yeah, you should be able to pull up. But I've watched uh, the documentary. I don't think I watched the whole thing, but it gives a background of her story. And they really didn't know when she was born or how old she really was. Um, she was a lesbian, but her character was an old grandma. Mm. And this is a this is a transition that this woman did that actually worked for her stage character to do comedy. She couldn't, especially in the 30s and 40s, she couldn't come out on stage as a lesbian in a suit. But they said that, you know, when you saw her out of character, she wore suits and everything like a man. And she, that, that was her. And she was really good people. But when she went on stage, she did this character and as an old grand, as an old black grandmother. Um, and that's how she got the name Mom. She started off in Wardville. Um, but other, other people on that list that we had up there just a minute ago were... Um, is Miles Mabley, Lenny Bruce? Was Lenny Bruce on there? Can pull that yes. back up. Mm -hmm. And George Carlin. Now, Lenny Bruce, I've never seen his act at all. Yeah, I've never seen any old Lenny Bruce. I, I I should watch some Lenny Bruce footage and see see what I think. Lenny Bruce died in '66. He died at a very young age. 
Um, but he was hilarious, and he was uh, I think he was the uh, he was the um the focal point of a movie or two, I think maybe. Uh, yes, um, I, I believe Al, was it Al Pacino played him or Dustin Hoffman played him yeah, in the movie Lenny. Now, um, okay, can I George can I Carlin? Talk well, okay, well, George Carlin first. George Carlin um, was very good on wordplay, um, a very funny um, comedian. Um, Seven words that you can't say on TikTok. Television. Yeah, which probably is like all totally out the box now in these day and age. But some Please of the things your stuff. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yes. That was hilarious. But George Collin was one of those comedians who um said things that you, you would laugh at, but you go, I do that. Wait a minute, hold on. It's funny, but it's true. And that was George Collin. Well, at, at the top of the stream, when we first started, I talked about how um, I had like my comedy trio, uh, the three comedians who, again, I, I didn't, it wasn't that I aspired to be those three comedians, but there were elements from all three of those comedians. And I realized what the theme, I realized what the theme was, but two of them were just in that slide. Um, Lenny Bruce which, and again, I have to preface it with, and again, that's another one of those comedians whose biography I was just like absorbing all this material. Um, and back in the 90s, uh, before we had iPods, I had what was called, a, listen kids, it's called the Walkman. It was like this little <laughs> box and you had cassettes you put in them and oh, heaven forbid that it got too hot and then your machine started to eat your cassette. But I had a two cassette uh, collection, the best of Lenny Bruce, that was over like, I think six hours of, I mean, that was, that would just sustain me on subway rides through New York City forever. I, I was so immersed in Lenny Bruce. And you know, I think with him, and with the other two, it was the storytelling that, that uh, again, they were taking the pain of their life. They were telling a story and they were still telling you something that you needed to know or you needed to be aware of. But and you know how we're going to make you aware of? We're also going to make you laugh. So you don't even realize that you're learning something, that you're being educated, informed, enlightened, uh, and all doing that through comedy. And man, as a comedian, I really aspired to do that. So on, on my top three, uh, Lenny Bruce was one. The other was a comedian I did... I actually, and I still have the book. It's probably packed up in my boxes from New York. Um, I got to do a, 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 a Marie Kondo uh, go through them. But I do want to make sure I keep this book so it doesn't get thrown away because it was autographed by George Carlin. And um, uh, I think I have several of his books, but I know I did actually do the whole wait in line to get an autograph because again, I consider George Carlin one of those goats. And again, it was all in the storytelling, all in the words, twisting them and just telling you something that was so right, so real, um, but yet so funny, tapping into what made it so funny. So again, on my goat three, uh, and I, I'm not going to put them in order, although, yeah, I probably could put them in order. If I had to put them in order, Lenny Bruce, definitely George Carlin, and finally, our GOAT, our greatest of all time. And I think you guys have already put it in the comments, uh, and that is Richard Pryor. Yes. Richard Yes, Pryor. Richard Pryor was the greatest of all time. Um, I, hands down, I, I I don't know how you can get around saying Richard Pryor wasn't the greatest comedian, um, the goat, the greatest of all time. Um, any comedian, even whether you liked Chappelle, whether you like Carlin, whether you liked uh, Kevin Hart, whoever you like and it's your favorite now, and you think that person's the funniest, and you had to mention your three best, 
and you put Kevin Hart on the top, you I mean, you would have if you knew comedians, you would have to have Richard Pryor on that list. Um I, I like this. that comedian pyramid, you know, you could have all your Dave Chappelle's, your Eddie Murphy's, your Kevin Hart's and and also to and uh JB Smooth, whoever you want to put out there. Richard but Richard Pryor, Richard, Richard Pryor would be on this. Because, and Richard Pryor is and, that one guy that again, a lot of comedians today say that's who they got the inspiration from, Richard Pryor. And what 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 I found, at least in the time that I did comedy, there were a lot of comedians who I think they were taking the language from Richard Pryor, or they thought they were taking the swagger uh, from Richard Pryor. But I think what was missed was was the heart was that Richard Pryor told these stories. It came from his own pain. And he found the funny and took us along on that journey. I think, and again, as a comedian, you know, that's that was the aspect of because, my, you know, my yeah, I, there, there were curse words every once in a while when I perform. But that wasn't the, you know, the, the flavor or the nature of my act. But what I was hoping to take, at least from Richard Pryor, from Lenny Bruce, from George Carlin, was to be able to take experiences craft them into stories i didn't go far enough didn't take it far enough obviously because i wouldn't be here on a saturday night talking with you guys <laughs> i'd be off on a movie set somewhere but um but i think that's what made richard Pryor just you know so phenomenal as a comedian um Ed, real, your comment is way too long, and I'm not going to put it up. Yeah, now. But real, real quick, real quick, real quick, Ed and Dion, I will be in touch with both of you tomorrow about the your horror show. We're going to try to do that next week. Um, in the meantime, in between time, um, yeah, Richard Pryor is the goat to me. He is very funny, and not only for his comedy, but his comic roles as far as acting. He did some serious roles, but he also did some very comedic Maybe roles. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but he also did some very comedic roles. Um, you can't who can forget him as Stir Crazy. Really? Come on, Stir Crazy. Come on, man. What are you doing? I'm being bad. They don't mess with you bad. That's right. That's right. We bad. We bad. We bad. We bad. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh, you know, his comedic role and uh so many different movies where he just does like um um, Silver Streak, he was funny in Silver Streak. Uh, in so many different movies, he was just funny in Car Wash. Uh, Which Way Is Up? Um, uh, uh, what was the end? He was in so many different movies. Um, I actually this- watched Star Crazy recently. Oh, and you know what, Kenny? I just realized I didn't put my shirt on. <laughs> Okay, you know, I you know what? Conference and at a training. How, all how you, how, 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 and how I you gonna have my shirt? How you gonna here. show that? How you gonna show that comment by Ed? Not show the other comment by Ed. Oh, Ed made a comment. I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't see it. I guess I missed it. Yeah, Richard Pryor was on, and the Richard Pryor comedy show too. He had his own comedy oh. show, and he only did four seasons. Sandra Bernhardt, Paul Mooney were also part of that. Robin Williams is part of that. Um, I actually Tim went, Reed. Tim Reed was actually part of that. Um, I, I uh, can, go can ahead. I tell another short story. Yeah, I know we're, over, we're way over time, but you know what? You shouldn't say you know. Hey, let's just talk about com- comedians. And expect me to. I I, I, hope, I opened the whole Pandora's box. You did, but uh, and and um, the Museum of Broadcasting Radio before it was the Paley Center or whatever they call it now, and now they do it like in L.A. and they do the big panels. But I was actually a member, and it's like you know what normal people have. You know, well, I did have a library card, but you know, normal people are members of you know the Met or the. You know, the art museum. Me, I was a member of the broadcast television museum. But the cool part is in New York City, if you were a member, you could go up, look through the archives, and you could, you know, select the shows you want to see. And you would go almost like you are in a library. You would get your own little private booth and headphones, and you could watch 
um, different shows. Like, you know, nice. if you wanted to go down memory lane and see that, you know, one episode of Gilligan's Isle and that one, you knew that we're getting, well, no, no, they never got off. But, um, but you know, you could watch all these old TV shows and one, and every once in a while they would do like retrospectives of different shows, whether it was old Carol Burnett shows or Lucy shows or, but I remember them showing and they had like a little amphitheater, um, the Richard Pryor show. And this one episode that I watched in particular, I thought was amazing because it featured all these women and, and I'm like, Oh, like Shirley Hemp. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shirley Hemphill from who was also a comedian from What's Happening and, and Marsha Warfield. You mentioned her. She yeah. was a comedian too that most people might remember from Night Court. But I was just amazed to see all the women uh, that he featured and highlighted. The only time he didn't feature and highlight women was when he wanted the pits. I ain't saying nothing about Gladys, just the pits. So basically, his musical guests were the Pips, the Pips, <laughs> and with a, with a with a microphone. And during the uh, you know the lead, there would be no singing. You know, they just show the, the microphone, pips. and then the Pips leaving, going. I know you will, because <laughs> he just wanted. To anyway. I, I but, like I like the scene he did. Um, he had a scene with Robin Williams, and they did um, um, "To Kill a Mockingbird." They did a take on To Kill a Mockingbird, and he had Robin Williams with him. And then on, I think, the last show, he did a roast. He did a roast where he went up and down the table and talked about, like, Robin Williams, Paul Mooney, Tim Reed, everybody else, and Marshall Warfield, and Sandra Bernhardt, and he talked about everybody, bust on them. And it was like a roast, and it was like, it's on YouTube, and it is Richard Pryor. It was classic Richard Pryor. It was just hilarious. Classic, classic. And and, we, and Eddie are... Murphy, Eddie Murphy had a joke about how when he first started doing comedy, he was trying to be Richard Pryor. And then and imagine how somebody like that, like Eddie Murphy, later on in life gets to hang out with Richard Pryor and even do a movie with him. And you know, and then do a movie with somebody like Richard Pryor and Red Fox and his idols and things like that. That's, so that's that's so that's really awesome. That is just so awesome. There is a sea of awesome comedians. Um, we just scratch the surface. And I know you guys in the comments uh, had so many that we didn't even get to. I think we hit all the ones that you mentioned and that were mentioned in the comments. Sinbad. Lucia, Lucia, Lucia Ball was, it was just Lucia Ball was more of like a comedic actress. actress. Uh -huh. Lucia Although Ball I like, was more. I like oh, you know what I forgot? Ed. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's a good show. But you know what we forgot? We've got um, um, Mel Brooks and um, who was the guy from uh, his dad? Um, um, from Paul all Reiner? of that, Carl Reiner. Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks when they did The Thousand Year Old Man. Okay. Yeah. That's like oh, a comic yeah, that's bit. Com that's a comedy. And they were comedian. Classic. Yeah, that's a comedy bit. I don't know but, if and, you um, know what. So, in all fairness, um, we we kind of I think we scrapped. We didn't have a. a usually, we go a couple weeks out on what we're going to talk about, and we are we're working in new topics coming up for the show. If there is a topic, go to the Kathy and Kenny uh, Explain Pop Culture Facebook page. Uh, throw a post up there with your suggestions. Send us a message. Uh, let us know what topics you'd love to talk about. Perhaps you can even be a guest as we're going to have uh, some of our guests coming up, sharing some of their favorite topics because horror is a genre. Oh, look at, look, at Dion, look at Dion's comment. Neither me or Kenny know a lot about. And, oh, yeah, I see that comment. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to put it up on the screen. <laughs> We are almost done. But before we go, we want to say thank you so much for watching. Wow. Don't forget to wow. like. Wow, you're just done. Okay. Subscribe. Next also, week. you can buy us a coffee at <laughs> buymeacoffee.com. You're just going to ignore. You're just going to ignore the comment. Okay. All right. I'm going to ignore the comment. And say. All right. All right. <laughs>
next week we hope to have next week we hope to do a horror show with Dion and Ed. So I gotta talk to Dion and Ed tomorrow so we can do a horror show next Saturday. Uh horror, horror, horror. Ooh. Because Kathy and I don't know a lot about horror. And apparently we want to do this show next week because hey, what else are we gonna do? We need to take a break for the holidays. What holidays? I don't know. Oh, you're already up to Christmas. Hey, listen, we need to I get like, I like, Ed's, I like Ed's new comment. Kenny should be in charge of the comments. No. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want Kenny in charge? Let's think about this, people. Let's 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 think about this. Let's be rational and real. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. You know, okay. I will give you the passcode. And well, I, in fact, I thought I did have you as a co um, that you would be able to. You know what? Okay. We will figure it out. And next I week, I don't want to be in charge. I don't want to be in charge. Next week, we're going to do the no, hard no, no. show. Oh, no. Oh, no, little brother. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to okay. give you the power. No, I don't want the power. The I don't want the power. I don't want the power. I am the power. No, I don't. I don't. I don't want the power. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't want the do, power. You can do countdown timer. I don't. I don't no, I don't. No, oh, I don't yeah. want that power. I don't want. Thank you for geeking you for out geeking with Kathy and Kenny on Kathy and Kenny Explain Pop Culture. Oh wait, I think I ended the show without ending the show. I'm sorry. You did. You did, you did, you did. You just ended it That's, without saying goodbye or anything. You just ended the show. You just cut it all off. That's why I need to give you the power. See, that's why we can't go over an hour. We get loopy. I'm loopy. I'm yeah, I, yeah. I'm not. I'm not loopy. I'm not loopy at all. But oh, anyway. Hey guys, we are out of here. Thank you so much for uh, for watching. Are we? Are we still broadcasting? Yes, we'll see you next Saturday. Oh, I didn't know we were still I, broadcasting. I by accident. Oh, okay. We're still broadcasting? Yes, I'm about to end it. Because I so, did like this, because I was, okay, never mind. Okay, we'll see you next week, guys. <laughs> God bless your soul and keep living, man. Next week, we're doing a horror show. Peace. Thank you for geeking, you for geeking out with geeking Kathy, out and Kathy and Kenny on Kathy and Kenny Explain Pop Culture.